You do not need to choose between your career and having a child. Find the right husband who cares about your dreams and support your decision. For four decades, I worked uh, quietly in the laboratory, performing experiments myself. Wrote a lab book, notebook, and you know, papers. I was picking up radioactive materials and, and also that, uh, you know, defrosted the freezer. So I did everything myself. I knew that what I was doing is important. So um, I didn't expect anybody to tap my shoulder and praise me and say that, Kati, you are doing a good job. And I was not attending ceremonies. The only ceremony I went when my daughter got gold medals in the Olympics and World Championship. Okay, I, I grew up in Hungary, in a small town with a population of 10,000. My mother was a bookkeeper, my father was a butcher. I learned how to make sausage. We had a bigger garden, maybe here in Italy is more appreciated, you know, to make sausage. So we had a big garden and animals in the yard. And as a little girl, you know, I watched the chicken hatch from the eggs. And um, I, I watched how the plants grow out of the small seeds. And I was very curious. And I had great teachers, and they encouraged me to keep learning. So that was my humble beginning, and there was a long, long winding road on which I arrived here today. My greatest joy in science is to uh, have those small and large victories in the lab. So if uh, somebody wants to be a scientist, uh, uh, it is not what I am here today, you know, to be famous. This is not about it. The science is this, you know, deep thinking and, uh, and away from the spotlight. If you want to be in the spotlight, be an actor or actress, or, or probably if you want to be, uh, you know, like uh, rich, then probably do not do science. So, and many times in the laboratory, when I got disappointed because my experiment didn't work, I have a, a quote from Leonardo da Vinci on the wall where it's written, and then when I read, I cheered up. Because it says that experiment never err, only your expectation. So every time I had to think that the reason for the failure was something that I didn't do experiment, I expected the result for. So I had to always think critically. I, you know, with my colleague together, we spent uh, years working out technologies. And uh, sometimes it seemed very unconventional, and sometimes almost like science fiction. But we share the immense belief that if the result of our work could prove the life only one person, then we have succeeded. And it is such a relief to know today that by now the vaccine successfully protected so many people from the serious side effect of COVID-19. During these four decades, I learned so much. So I thought that I would share my experience with the student who might be online, and some of them maybe is here present. So what is the most important? Love your work. We spend most of our life working, which is, you know, important that we have to enjoy it. It is very important that here most of the students already decided that they want to be physician or scientists, and they will dedicate their life helping others, taking care of the patient. Second thing, which I find very important, is you have to learn how to handle stress. I was in high school when, when my teacher handed a book called Stress of Life from Hans Scheye, who was happened to be a Hungarian, and they translated the book. So in high school, I could read that book. And um, his, uh, this book helped me to stay on track, no matter how challenging it had been. Shaye actually coined the word stress for the human feeling in the 1930s. 
He said that stress can kill you, but depending on how you perceive it, how you react it. And believe it or not, life without stress is very boring. So you need stress, that's what he said. But you have to learn how to convert the negative stress to positive one. So let's say if you are fired from your job, embrace it, the news, and take it as a new opportunity. You are not believing me. Okay. I needed this advice as I have been terminated in my position several times. I wouldn't be here if it wouldn't happen. So by adopting uh, the right attitude, you can cover the, co convert the negative stress to a positive one. And you need this positive stress, what it is, expectation, excitement. And uh, so I look every time as one door closed and other opened. The next uh, advice, focus what you can do and what you can change. And this is again from Shaya. Many uh, students and young people, and even older ones, can burn out because they realize that uh, comparing themselves to others, they realize that those others might not, uh, uh, you know, working that hard, not achieving that much, but they are promoted, they get more salary, and so on. I ask, uh, please do not pay attention to those things because you cannot change. It is just a destruction. Rather spend your energy, to, improving, to improve yourself, work harder, be more creative, and then perform better. The next one is believe in yourself. The environment can be intimidated, especially for young people entering to a new workplace, and it seems that everybody knows so much. And then, um, as myself, you know, a small town girl, from Hungary, going to the American Ivy League school, I was asking myself, could I think something that all those very, very smart people publishing the top journal not think about? But I had to answer that, yes, why not? And so I am asking, please believe yourself. Do not settle for a lesser job. Aim high and believe you can do it. What they say is, Believing in yourself is an endless destination. Believing you will fail, end of your journey. The next one, advice is, uh, get to know your fellow student, nice to them, follow their professional work. In 2003, when I realized that I have to make uh, nucleoside modified RNA, but I had no idea how I can do it. So I first turned to Tomasz Kisch, a biologist, who used to be a fellow student at the University of Szeged. Uh, we lived in the same dormitory and actually worked in the same uh, uh, institute. By that time, he was working in Toulouse, and I knew that he discovered and published how the molecular mechanism occur when our own body get RNA modification. So I called him up, asked for help. He gave me good advice, but he said that those enzymes he's using he's won't help me. So I had to call up an other student who at that time already was already a professor and as organic chemist Janusz Ludwig. He used to be a fellow student, graduate student. We worked shoulder to shoulder in the RNA lab in the 80s. And he told me where I can buy the material that eventually I did and could generate the desired RNA. So I am asking the student when they are sitting in the classroom, just look around. Look around you and look at those other students, because one day those will be, you will need their help. Those will be the expert. And, the, uh, and you, if you create a, a relationship and follow their work after graduation, learn what they are doing and they will help you. Those uh, relations with uh, form during the university years is, is not based on interest, because uh, we are just students together. And, so that's the beauty of it. And what Maria mentioned, another advice, find the right partner for life. I met my husband while we were student, and he has supported all my decisions every step on the way. He moved to a foreign country with me 
we had hardly had any money in our pocket and our daughter, two years old, was our side. And he did all of this so I can continue my research. And he never told me, stop research, finally cook something. When I was at the weekend rushing back, because there was always one more important experiment to do. He even supported me to move to Germany eight years ago when I felt I needed to do it to help mRNA enter to the clinical trial. He knew how important science, science was for me. And my daughter, Susan Francia, grew up to appreciate my lifelong commitment to science, and she also always encouraged me. So girls, my advice is to you that you do not need to choose between your career and having a child. Find the right husband who cares about your dreams and support your decision. Let me tell you about another story about my daughter. She was seven years old, just finished second grade. And when she got home, started writing a letter right away. I asked her who you are writing to, and she said to me, to my teacher, Mrs. Wilson, I thank her for the wonderful year. We learned so much. I was 30 years, 35 years old, and I realized I haven't sent any letter to my teachers. But then all changed. No, I visit them, call them, send letter, and express my appreciation. So the conclusion is, do not hesitate to learn from anybody. Even a seven years old can teach you something. And from time to time, tell those who helped you how much you value what they have done for you.